is Billy Ruth Hopkins Furuichi on KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial right here in beautiful downtown Brookings where almost every day is a beautiful day and we can always choose to say yes. Life is indeed very, very good. Well, my new episodes of Angelita's Wings are taking us into outer space. So, you can be sure that this is a work of pure, unadulterated, feigned fiction. So, any resemblance to persons living or dead, or yet to be born, well, hmm, is purely up to your own interpretation. Sit back, suspend all of this belief, and let's see what these wild characters are up to. By the way, the music in the background is all by my grandnephew, Samuel Rex Spivey, who can be found on SoundCloud, Invincible Pyro. Thanks, Samuel. I appreciate your creativity and your spectacular imagination. In the first episode, dear listeners, we will meet Mom and Pop God, who tell us all about the ages-old legend of Shavano and Angelita. Oh, oh, look, look, over there, driving up north on Highway 285 in their RV. It's Mom and Pop God and their cat, Ethergis, sitting on a plush golden pillow on the console between them. They're headed to Crestone, Colorado, where they will soon discover Angela Perez's diary under the floorboards of her old house that miraculously survived the solar tsunami of 4332 in the final destruction of Earth. Oh, don't worry. None of us will be around to go through that terrible day, but who knows? We might be able to prevent it if we learn how to treat each other with Kindness, compassion, and true agape love. Let's listen in and hear about the legend of Shavano and Angelita and see how all these wild outer space adventures began long, long ago in Crestone, Colorado. Break a break, pop God here, putting down the hammer on Highway 285. Toward Crestone, Colorado. Mother Ethandra, Mom God, and Ethergis are with me, as always, our safe driving teams on the job. Of course, I'm in control of everything, so no problem there. <laughs> well, Pop, that's not quite true, actually. Meow, si, si, escúcheme, escúcheme, cierto que si. De vez en cuando, Pop God takes over. His ego just gets out of hand and he can't quite help himself. After an, an eternity of bad habits. Twert ever thus. A third just twert ever thus. All right, you two, I get the picture. Now, where was I? Right, Earthlings. Hmm. So Earthlings always loved to take the remote control away from me, contaminating Gaia in the process, so I just finally had to do something about it. Well, Pop, Earthlings always like to take the remote control away from me, too, you know, don't forget. But I learned to just sit back and watch. Remember the old saying, Pop, Patience is a virtue. Possess it if you can. It's often found in woman, but rarely found in man. Yeah, 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 Mother Thondra. My ears are still burning from the last time you told me that. But let me get on with the legend of Angelita and Shabano. Will our listeners really believe any of it? I made it all up. <laughs> so listen, here's some real questions. How did Shabano become a snow angel on Mount Shabano in the Sawatch Range of southern Colorado? What happened after Angelita and the Ute warrior son, Shabano, fell madly in love? How did Angelita end up on the planet of Ethereus in the Simeon Galaxy? Will Ethergis, the multilingual cat, rescue Angelita and bring her back to Earth? 
through a wormhole before Earth has been completely destroyed in that solar tsunami. Can love and compassion save humanity? Is this just another one of Grandma Gaga's recurring dreams? Is Angela Perez dreaming the very same dream as her grandmother? Will we all wake up before the seventh destruction and realize that love is the only way to heal wounds of hate, prejudice, and war? Is Angela also Grandma Gaga, who is also Mother Ethandra, in the future? Wait, what? Does that mean that Angela's mother, Wisteria, is really Etheria in my dark matter domain and on the planet of Etherius too? Oh, my stars, this is all just too much to contemplate. Oh, Pop, why do you always make things so complicated? H how could anyone be expected to figure it all out? We better get a third just the cat to lead the way through all of these storybook layers of confusion from Crestone through all the drains and crystalline caves and wormholes to the planet of Ethereus and back to Crestone through the frozen fountain of Swan Lake outside of Salida. Whoosh! Oh, my stars, this is a lot to take in, Pop. Oh, I am most certainly his mother, but that's the way of all legends, myths, and storybook layers. Oh, you should know, I made them all up. <laughs> and maybe, dear listeners, these stories are all just layers of your story. Maybe you are dreaming too, and when you wake up, you will start rewriting your own story for better outcomes. It happens. <laughs> well, that's true, Pop. Maybe, maybe all of you out there in Radio Land will be able to figure out how to heal injustice, prejudice, hate, violence, war. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's all possible someday. Maybe you'll learn how to cooperate and build bridges of love on Earth, wouldn't that? be miraculous well well that is the way of the thurgis after all the way of agape and the red threads of gravity and love that transcend all chaos throughout the universe it will all just take a lifetime or two so just sit back relax suspend all that disbelief out there and enjoy our story of anhelita's adventures in outer space Meow, escutcheon me, escutcheon me, meow, see, see, I'll lead the way, as usual. Here we are, heading up north on Highway 285 in Southern Colorado, K-Pop hey. Oh, hey, see that sign up ahead, that, that State Road 17, merge right at that broken down little rock shop with all those UFO signs in the front of it, I... I would recognize that anywhere. My old stomping grounds. Oh, well, I, I can't quite see it. H hand me my distance glasses there, Mother. Looks like, yeah, thank you. Uh, look, hmm. Oh, I see it now. Looks like it was a, called the fountain. Hmm. Fountain of what, I wonder? Get a century, Pop. The fountain of truth and love and regeneration, of course. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes you do it downright enlightening. Or supposed to pop me out. It's more now, Jesus. Well, Thurgis is right, dear. Uh, we have always been enlightened, you know. Hmm. And you, pop. Either you give me the wheel or keep those distance glasses on if you want to keep driving this rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, now, oh, slow down right here. Right here, go through town slow, then turn right, right, right at that next little street there. This is where Angela and her mother, Wisteria Perez, used to live. Meow, Mom, say Perez, Perez, not Perez, Perez. Trip the R just a little bit there, trip it. Okay, okay, Perez. That, that, that's where, oh, that's that cute little bright blue house with the porch swing and the white picket fence. Right there, pull in and park. 
Let's go inside, see what we can find. Oh, look, Pop. Look, Pop. There's some old dusty papers I found under these floorboards here in Angela's room. That's 700 Earth years ago. 2022. She must have hidden these papers so the Master General of the Autocrats couldn't take and burn them. She and the third just buried most of her diaries in the sand dunes southwest of town here, but she must have forgotten these for some reason. Good thing, too, otherwise they would have been lost forever, tossed by hot winds and sands in that solar tsunami. Mm, here, let me see. Here, wait, hand me my readers. Let's switch classes here. Hand me my readers, mother. Mm, yeah. Oh, this looks to be a fascinating tale in two distinct handwritten scripts. One looks to be the language they used to call English, and the other is similar in style, but spoken quite differently, I'm sure. If they're just come over here and help me read this for us. Here, kitty, 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 here, kitty, kitty, here. If they're just here, well, well, where on earth have they run off to? Never round here when I need him. Or oh, is it her? Hmm. Never was quite sure. Here, kitty, 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 help me with this story. Meow. Yes, yes, scoochin', yes, scoochin', man, yes, scoochin'. Looks to be the legend of Shabano and Angelita, la leyenda de Shabano y Angelita. Los hilos rojos del amor, those red threads of gravity and love. I discovered it first, Mom, centuries ago, actually, in the Earth archives, written in different dead languages, well, English and Spanish, oh, even a bit of Japanese. I remember them well. Well, that's what I was just telling them, Athurgis, while you were out gallivanting around in the past. Yeah, see, see, you scratching me. Dije so. Just digging my paws into this land again, remembering how it used to be. Our listeners may not know that Crestone is situated in the southern Colorado, just east of the Sawatch Range, where, where some of the most magnificent Rockies tower in the west. One such legendary peak is Mount Shavano. This document we've just discovered tells the story of how Shavano became the snow angel that bears his name. Of course, various iterations of this legend were told way before the seventh destruction. I myself remember writing one of them. My companion Angela must have written her own version here in her diary. These chicken scratches are what they used to call English before all spoken and written languages were banned. Well, finally, the Matriarchal Global Council staged a fateful coup against the interplanetary masters of masculinity, who later became the master autocrats, those infamous brutal bullies who tried to erase critical thinking altogether. Language, music, art, and dance, they stormed around, burning as many artifacts as they could get their grubby little mitts on. Oh, yes, I remember it well. Talk about cancel culture mean. Sadly, the matriarchal global council was unsuccessful in their coup, leading directly to Pop taking control, ushering in the solar tsunami, the seventh and final destruction of Earth in 4332. I couldn't just stand around and watch another world war, plus all that environmental devastation. Might as well just start over. Well, you could have let me figure out something, Pop. Don't start with me, Thunder. It is what it is. Oh, hello. Brilliant. Uh, I do say, pardon me, hello, but I feel I must... Chime in here. Oh, Clarissa, my dear, but of course allow me to introduce you to our listeners. This dear listeners is Clarissa Dalloway. You may have heard of her if you are a lover of literature. 
brilliant pop, yes, I was quite popular in the early stream of consciousness circles, if I do say so myself. So, as I was saying, I remember that very sad day indeed, pop, but luckily for us, some written records were of, of the matriarchal global council were buried in the great sand dunes just southeast of Creston, where I was teaching high school English literature. I remember in particular one of my best students, Angela Perez, wrote some papers in her own diary. She buried them one hot afternoon when we were all on a field trip to the dunes. She and her brother Zerko, and a third just two, as I recall, eventually these pages were scattered hither, thither, as bitter December winds kicked them up and tossed them about. Oh, it's a miracle you found them, Pop. Yeah, I am scooching me, scooching me. I, 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 Senor Dalloway, I, I was the one who found them myself. I recreated that book you are holding here in your hand. Here, give it to me, give it to me. Oh, give it to me. I'm the only one who can read Spanish. Give, 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 give. Yeah, yeah, here, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dalloway. It says, mis queridos amigos. Habían pasado siete destrucciones del planeta que estaba llamado Earth hace siglos. Allow me to translate, my dear friends. Seven destructions had befallen what used to be known as Earth. Mm, oh, meow, yes. The legend in this diary was passed from generation to generation as mothers, grandmothers, aunties, sisters, and brothers drank tea or hot chocolate sitting around a campfire making s'mores. Of course, that was before the interplanetary masters of masculinity, who later changed their name to the master autocrats, fearing blowback from the die-hard magnificent matriarchs. So many factions in those days, no wonder language was banned. Uh, the master autocrats mandated the bedding of all spoken and written languages, along with artifacts of literature, music, art, and dance. Then they developed handheld crystalline orbs that could transmit every thought back to their evil headquarters. Mm -hmm. Everyone had to carry an orb with them at all times. They were called... PCRTDs, Personal Communication and Recording Devices. Well, of course, the T for Translation and Transportation through Wormholes was added much later in, in the development process. Pues sigamos con nuestro cuento, la leyenda de Shavano y Angelica y como sus corazones habían roto hace siglos. But let us continue with our legend of Angelita and Shavano. Oh, brilliant, uh, brilliant, Thurgis, yes, cheers. I, I, I remember teaching that legend in my senior lit class eons ago. One of the other teachers that year, Senor Roel. Oh, and I actually did a lovely bilingual production of it in 2022. At the Salida Theatre, so sad what happened to Senior Roel and Angela's mother, Wisteria. And that poor young boy, Chris, who played the role of Shivano quite brilliantly in our production. Chris would have graduated that year. Well, but you of all people, Clarissa, should know that death is but a transition. Energy never dies. It simply changes form. Oh, of course. Of course, I... Of course. I do know that, Pop, but it doesn't make loss any easier, now does it? Hmm. Well, Pop, I think we should do a flashback. Let's go back to that ten-year high school reunion, and I can see Senor Roel and Chris again. I'd love to see how they were all doing. Oh, they wouldn't be at the ten-year reunion, would they? 
Oh, but you must have some old footage of them, Pa. On your orb. Get your orb, Papa. Pa, get out your orb. Hold your horses, Cl- Clarissa. Let me see here. Yeah, let me go back. Yeah, this is coming into focus now. Now, just wait a bit. Wait, wait. Patience is a virtue. Just, yeah, see, I got it now. Oh, brilliant cheers. Yes, there it is. Freeze frame right there on Senor Cesar Roello. Cesar, you were so very handsome. Oh, Clarissa, we should continue with the legend first. We can always show that reunion. We can go all the way back later. Concentrate on your orb now, Pop, and go back a few hundred years. Go back to the legend of Shavano and Angelita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back, further, further, back, 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 further, back. There, there. Oh, it's coming into focus now. It'll, it'll make more sense to our listeners if they understand that story first. The legend of Angelita and Shavano. Keep going. Yeah, that or that. Okay, freeze, freeze that orb right there. Una leyenda de cuentos vantiscaros. It says here scattered stories like leaves falling from the tree in autumn. <coughs> Mom, you gotta get your accent going there better. It, it's not, it's not Una leyenda de cuentos vantiscaros. It's Una, lilt the tone a bit. It's una leyenda de de cuentos bandisqueros. Scattered stories like leaves falling from a tree in autumn. Yes. Oh, brilliant Mother Thondra. Stories scattered hither thither like broken hearts of separated lovers, like young men killed in way too many wars, like ice on a mountain top looking like an angel then melting to flow down into the fields and plains, providing water for people, trees, crops. Flowers, animals, such magnificent animals they had, all plentiful in those days, yes, so many scattered stories, and so sad and tragic layers, yet, hmm, not so sad in other ways, after all, what is real, what is a dream? What is illusion? What is death but a transition, Pop? Oh, Clarissa, always carried away in your prolific streams of consciousness. Meow, escuchen, escuchen me, escuchen me, dolls. So this is a tale of old conflicts, peace versus war, acceptance versus prejudice. Love versus hate, Zapotec versus Ute. Esta es una historia de conflictos ancestrales, paz contra guerra, sación contra pe- prejuicio, amor contra huido, hermana contra hermano, nosotros contra ellos. Hmm. And in this case, Zapotec. Contra Yut. This is a legend of Angelita and Shavano. A tale of forbidden love. A young couple from different tribes, different cultures, different beliefs. Beliefs that caused so much pain and suffering for all. Yes. However, as you will come to discover, the power of love is a healing power and much stronger than any other power in the universe, for love is, in fact, gravity itself. Meow. Perhaps that is why the interplanetary masters of masculinity, who, who, as you remember, changed their name to the Master Autocrats, at the risk of repeating myself, banned and burned all literary and artistic artifacts they can get their grubby little mitts on and develop the first handheld... P-C-R-T-D orbs, like what, the one you're still using there, Pop. Yeah. But, but this is a story of true love and redemption. El poder 
de amor es mucho más fuerte que cualquier otro poder en el universo, porque el amor es, de hecho, en realidad, la gravedad misma. Did I say that before? Meow. In any case, it bears repeating for it is absolutely true. Meow. Anyone fortunate enough to find their soulmate will be eternally connected by the red threads of gravity and love, which swirl and twist and interconnect and glide and sing throughout the universe in magnificent colors and glorious symphonic music of the spheres. Meow. It has long been known in Japan as the Akaito, the Red Thread. Puede que no lo supieras, es absolutamente cierto. Cualquier que tenga la suerte de encontrar a su alma gemela estará eternamente conectada por los hilos rojos de la gravedad y el amor que se arremolian, se ret Tuerzan, se interconectan, se deslizan y cantan por todo el universo con magníficos colores. Of course, only a few have ever seen these swirling interconnected red threads of gravity and love, for they are invisible on Earth, and not many on Earth have heard their ethereal songs. But on with our tale. Well, now I want you all just to relax and breathe. It is essential that you suspend all thoughts of disbelief. We'll continue our remarkable tale in the next episode when you will meet the young Zapotec girl on Kelita and her family who walked from Mexico to Colorado's San Joaquin Valley and homesteaded an apple farm on the banks of the Arkansas River, which happened to be situated right there in the middle of new territory where Shavano lived. This caused more than one violent altercation, as you might well imagine. Especially when Angelita and the new chief's son, Shavano, fell madly in love, meeting in secret each evening under the huge old apple tree in the middle of the father's orchard, and as the sun descended over the three tall snow-capped mountains of the Sawatch range, and she began declaring eternal devotion. Well, Pop, okay, stop there. Yet yeah, don't tell him absolutely everything yet, Pop. Save it for the next episode. We're taking control again, Athandra. All right, all right. Have it your way. But remember, you, all you listeners out there in Radio Land, in our next episode of On Religious Adventures in Outer Space, we will do that flashback to the 10-year high school reunion of Angela Perez, her friend Jennifer Gaylord, and English lip teacher Mrs. Clarissa Dalloway, of course. A brilliant, I can hardly wait, Pop. Wow, me neither. Whew. Stay tuned for the next episode of Angelita's Adventures in Outer Space. Well, this is Billy Ruth Hopkins Furuichi with KCIW 100.7 on your FM dial right here in beautiful downtown Brookings. Remember to catch us on podcast at www.kciw.org forward slash A-N-G-E-L-I-T-A-S dash wings. Until next time.